Hello and welcome to the Therapist Marketing Podcast. My name is Rosie Piercy, I'm a chiropractor and clinic director and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about marketing and practice building. And today we're talking about brand image and brand identity and in my mind part of that is creating the, the practice, the, the, the clinic of your dreams. So um, I want you to close your eyes for a second a little bit of an experiment here. Close your eyes for a second. Now think about your ideal clinic. Now this may be the clinic you already have, the clinic you're already in, the clinic that you want to have in the future. And if you are if you don't have your own clinic and you're either an associate for someone else or you're renting a room from someone else and you're happy there and you're not looking to leave, which is brilliant, that's great. That's, that's, that's great. Um, then... Then close your eyes and imagine that space, your clinic, your the space you're working in, everything like that. Imagine, close your eyes and imagine it and think about how you would like that to be seen by others. How you would like that to be seen by yourself. Think about all the words, the colours um, of your logo, the, the words that people would use to describe your clinic, the words you would use to speak to other people, the clothes you're wearing, how the room looks. Think about that. Just really think about it for a second. If necessary, pause me so you can have a good old think. All of that that we were just thinking about, apart from perhaps being your dream, is your brand image and your brand identity. So sometimes it's not something we think very much about as therapists because most of us, we we want to focus on patients because that's the bit we really love doing is treating patients and, and helping them get better. But what attracts patients to clinics, what attracts patients to one therapist more than the other, and indeed any customer to one thing more than the other, is brand and image and identity. Yes, there will be some plus, some, some price points and, and, and you know, location and, and things like that, but people buy, so you, like say you're imagining you're on you're looking for to buy something and there's one product that looks exactly the same from the other. One has a name to it, a brand, a recognisable brand that you know and one doesn't. So the branded one's going to be more expensive than the other one because it carries that name with it. Because you know that that name, that brand stands for certain things and this thing, the one that doesn't have the brand name and is cheaper, doesn't. Now, the cheaper one may be just as good as the branded one, but most people will go for the branded one because... They trust the brand. And that is how important it is. And so that's why I think it's really um, vital as therapists that we think about our branding and our image, particularly now that we're coming out of lockdown in this time of, you know, the coronavirus pandemic that we're in at the moment. What are we on? The 17th of June today, we're we're recording this. Um, We're coming out of that time. So how people relate to us as a clinic, as our brand, as our reputation is really important to make them trust us to come into our clinics. And even if we weren't in a time of global pandemic, people, when people say give a word of mouth recommendation for your clinic, that is them recommending your brand. That is them saying they're a good person to go to. And so you want to make sure, as we know, that they then do a good job for that person they recommend. Otherwise, that pers- person who recommended you will never recommend again because they've been let down by you. So hope that kind of puts it into context about what, what, why brand is important. So today, what I'm going to go through is, is three way, three things in particular um, branding does to attract patients to you and the importance of it. So first of all is what we've kind of already done, which it creates the image of your clinic. So when I say clinic, just as I kind of said a second ago, but to just clarify, when I say clinic, I mean either a physical building you're occupying, um, which is either your clinic or one that you're an associate at, um, or a space that you rent from someone else. And then the word clinic can also be a kind of virtual term for anything to do with your business. So online, um, so websites, social media, um, your Google My Business account, all of that in my mind, is your clinic. So it doesn't necessarily just mean the physical location that you're talking about, because brand image and brand identity are not just the physical place that you are. They're everything to do with your business. Um, I think somebody, and I can't remember who, 
said it's it's almost the, your brand image is what people say about you when you're not in the room so that's one another way of thinking about it so it creates your image which we've just done by closing eyes and imagining what our dream would look like so now if you're not at your dream yet we made we need to work out how to get there now there is a check a checklist that you can download again pause me now if you want to go and download that before we carry on um it's in the show notes so that you can download that it's completely free and so you can go through all the things you need to create this brand identity which will help create your brand image so your image is the tone and character you, you speak to people with so what words you use what words you don't use do you speak in a very formal voice um, do you or do you speak in a more casual tone um, so for instance if you're using social media do you use emojis or do you not use emojis you know and you may find that your social media tone is slightly a lighter version of your normal tone because it's slightly more um, uh, what's the word casual but it doesn't have to be some you know for instance um, you wouldn't expect the government when they're posting to have a different tone on their website as they would on their social media. You'd expect that to be the same because they're the government and they need to be seen to be consistent on everything. Um, however, I would say probably I'm slightly more relaxed on my social media than I am on my website. Maybe not tons, but a little bit. But that all depends on how you feel comfortable um, talking to and identifying with your patients. And what's really important to say here as well is don't try and do what someone else does because it won't be authentically you and people will pick it up as soon as they start speaking to you. And any mismatch between how you come across online virtually and how you come across in person will jar with people a little bit. And it makes them, even if it's subconsciously, it makes them not sure. And you don't want people who are unsure asking you for treatment. We want... We want people to be completely certain that you are the same person all the time. Now, obviously, we have a professional side that we put on our professional face um, when we're treating. Um, and we probably aren't going to be sharing our full life story on social media um, or with our patients. But you still have to be authentically you. So if you see someone else doing something on their social media or on their website and you think, oh, that looks really great, but it's just not me. Well, then it's just not you. And the people who are attracted to that person's way of talking and way of doing things probably wouldn't be attracted to how you talk and work and do things. But that's okay because you'll, it's called having your tribe. You will attract your own tribe of people who like how you do things. And that's fine. And I think part of being a therapist and going through your career is you realise that not every patient is a patient for you. That some patients will want to see somebody else and that's actually okay. It, you don't have to see every patient in the world. Um, well, you'd be very busy if you did. But there will be some people who will go, want to go and see someone, say, I'm a chiropractor. So there may be someone who wants to go and see, when I was in a practice with other chiropractors, they want to go and see another chiropractor in a practice and not me. And yes, sometimes your ego can feel a little bit bruised. But that's just because they, they identify with that person better or they think that person can help them better. And, and it almost isn't, is that true? Because that may not be true. We may, could, may be able to equally think that we can treat each other, that person, the same way. But the patient has felt that that person is right for them. So that, so in some ways, try not to worry about what other people are doing. Just, sounds a bit corny, just be true to yourself when you're marketing and it really comes out well. Don't try and be someone you don't, you're not. However, if you see someone doing something, you think, oh, that's cool. How can I do that kind of thing but be within my own bounds? Then that's absolutely fine. Because that's just saying, I like the way that they've, I don't know, shot a video about gardening in their garden. I'm going to go and do that in my garden as well. But I will still use my tone that I use for the patients. I will still use my language. Um, and I'll make it more authentically my marketing rather than the other person's. So that's the kind of, if you like, the, the, the tone section of your brand image. The other side is the visual image. So that will be your logo, the colours used in your logo. And how you use them throughout your website um, and your social media and how that logo reflects with the building that you're in. Now, if you're only somewhere temporarily, maybe this is not something that's so important. But if you're somewhere, 
if you're opening a clinic, then you need to make sure that your your logo, the, the, what it actually physically looks like, the colours and the and the font that you're using in it, is is this sort of reflects where you're going to be working. You can't have a really jazzy, spiky, um, modern neon sign flashing type logo, and then work in a listed building, in my opinion, because they jar. They jar badly and it looks like it might not be right. Um, unless, of course, you found some way to carry that jazzy modern look throughout the entire furnishings of the building. I don't know how you do that. I'm sure it can be done. It's just obviously not I can do that. But if, if that's your image, if that's how you are as a person, if you're really modern and funky and into that kind of stuff and you can carry that all the way through, then perfect. But if you can't, then you've got to think about how, how whether it's a mismatch, whether it works. And it's also really important that any advertising you do or any social media marketing that you do, you use that logo, the same logo, the same colours on that and your website so it follows through. Don't have a pink and green logo and then have a bright red website because it clashes. And also people go, I'm on the right place because the logo doesn't match. And that creates, again, that jarring, that I'm not sure if I can trust this. It's not consistent. And then people get a bit, maybe they're not the right people, maybe they're not, maybe it's not real, let's go somewhere else. Um, so that's really important and it's it's a really important thing to remember, people need to see your, your logo, I think it's at least five times before they'll recognise it as your brand. So try and get it out there whenever you can. And what I often do is I have a sort of a little man as part of my logo and then some words, sort of the name of the business. So sometimes we'll just take the little man out so it's a part of the logo. Um, so we're helping people identify that little man as our as our identity as well as the, the whole logo. Um, perfect. The next thing is um, sort of identifying with you. So we've had how we create our image and then we've had a, then we're moving on to identifying with you. So some of that will be, as we said already, how you talk to people, how you how you show up on your social media, on your website, how you dress um, and also what you're saying you're treating and how you say you treat it, that will help people decide, do they do they want to be seeing you? Do they want to be treating, be treated by you? Is, is how you're carrying yourself and how you're coming across something that they want to, want to be involved with or not? So it's, so this is the same, similar to what we were saying before. If you are um, being very informal, off the cuff, maybe you, work maybe you would work um, in normal times in jeans and t-shirt and flip-flops then that's great and you're going to attract one kind of patient but if you're working in basically a suit maybe not with a blazer but a suit then and you're and you're very formal then you'll attract another type of patient because people identify with people they, who are like them so that's that's how you'll create a differentiation as I was saying before it doesn't matter if people are different or don't always come to see you because there's not you you're not always going to please everyone and that's actually okay um and again we talk about the brand identify identifying that they probably need to see you at least five times to identify with you so making sure that you are consistent with your logo and your colors and your fonts throughout every single thing that you do so that it is recognizable as you and then people will instantly start going oh yeah i recognize them they're really good and you may then start to have a reputation from people who've never been to your clinic, haven't been to your practice, haven't been treated by you, but they know because they've heard from someone else, from someone else, that you're really good, or your clinic is really great, or yeah, they really help someone, they're amazing. And that's the power of word of mouth and having a good brand identity, is that even though a person hasn't been seen by you, has never been treated by you, they've heard from someone else how wonderful you were and are happy to recommend you because they recognise your brand and because they like your brand image and they've been told by somebody else. So that's the strength of getting it good and that really helps you ad attract patients. So when I am, um, my big clinic, Total Health, has only been around for, I think it's about two and a half years now. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had people say, oh yeah, my hairdresser said it's amazing here. Now I'm, and then from further questioning, that hairdresser's never been to the building. They've just been told by one of their clients that this place is amazing. Obviously, a bit of an ego boost for me, yay me. 
But what makes it what was interesting about that is that that sort of proves how it works. You know, I spent a lot of time making the clinic look really, really very lovely and be a very relaxing place. And the one of the things, if we go back to brand identity um, and service levels, which I talked about in an earlier podcast, I'll link to that one as well, about creating your mission statements and your values and your um, and that kind of thing is a part of my values and mission statement was to cr- pr- pr- provide the best quality service for patients and the therapist who rent for me. That was like my number one goal. And so to, and I hear comments like that, it makes me happy because I've achieved my goal. That particular thing hasn't made me any money and sometimes it's not always about the money, but the, the, the reputation that I wanted to get out is what's getting out. And that is through every single little thing that you do. So it's not just about what you do in the treatment room, it's how your reception staff treat talk to people, it's how people answer the phone, it's how welcome they're made to be in the building. That creates how people identify with your your clinic, your image. So if you're an associate, then then you can still affect that. You know, how you walk into the clinic reception and greet your patient and how the reception looks, you know, so you, all that kind of thing that you maybe can have some input in or can help with is is important. So create that's every little thing. So how welcome people are made really matters if that's what you want for your clinic. If you don't want people hanging around your clinic, you're in and out, then make it swifter, make it shorter. But, you know, patients hang used to, not now because we can't have a reception area nor coffee. But people used to turn up early or stay late to finish their tea and coffee. And I was really help, happy for that because I wanted a welcoming environment that people felt happy to do that in. So it, but if you've got, if you were a, a busier clinic or if you're if you see more patients an hour than I do and you probably don't want that maybe I don't know maybe you still do but you need a bigger reception area but then you would change how things are in a clinic in your clinic to to modify that and then you would perhaps attract, attract patients that are that don't want that either so you can see how how all your interactions in clinic can help build your identity um, and a final one point is is no like and trust. So no like and trust is that people get to know you, therefore they like you, therefore they trust you. So that's part of why being present on on social media, sending out newsletters to your patients, um, having a really good website, writing regular blogs, or even just having very good quality blogs, even if you don't write them all the time, is really important. Because people get to read this stuff. So they get to read your blogs. They get to see you on social media. They get to look at your really cool website. And they get to know what you talk about. They get to know how you talk about things. They can see maybe how things will happen. So my blogs are quite a lot often based around, hey, here's a problem you might have. So the one I've done this week is DIY aches and pains or avoiding injuries. So basically, she's told me what they are, told me how to avoid them, given me some exercise and told me if I don't get better, have some treatment. So that gives me an idea of what kind of, of how, because and I have a lot of videos in my blog with me talking. So, because um, you're really using content from Facebook Lives, top tip. Um, so that's getting them to know me quite well in some ways because they'll have seen me talk, they'll have seen me give them advice, I've gone through some stretches with them. So it gives me them a better idea of what it's going to be like to come and see me. It's building a relationship between me and a potential patient before they've even stepped through the door of my clinic or even contacted us. And if you do that regularly, and obviously there'll be times when maybe you can't because I don't know, it's a global pandemic crisis or you're ill or you lose your internet connection or something happens. So, you know, if you miss a week because of that, the world really will not end. Um, But if you um, are consistently, regularly turning up, then people get to know you. And if they keep turning up and watching you, then they obviously like you and then they get to trust you. And that's where also the consistency in your brand is important. So always having the same logo, having your logo across, always using the same font, and the same colours, and it can be, I've read somewhere, that even having an inconsistency about whether you use full stops at the end of your kind of header sentences or not, can subconsciously create in the brain a little bit of a, oh, well that wasn't the same, she's done three different things on this page. So all creating that consistency creates that trust, 
And that means people are more likely to be attracted to your clinic because they've already gone for that no like and trust process before they've already picked up the phone. They've already decided that they want to see you. And if you're new in practice and you wonder why people wait to see a certain therapist, a certain chiropractor, a certain osteopath, a certain podiatrist when they could see one of their associates sooner, that's part of that no like and trust. That's part of that image identity that that therapist has around them, that brand. And they'll often be the people who've been in practice for a long, not a very long, long, maybe 5, 10, 15 years, because they have spent the time building their reputation, building their brand, building their identity. It may not have been a conscious thing if that's what they're doing, but that's what they're doing. And so they will be very well known in the community. When I was in Oxford, there's a chiropractor um, called Dr. Broom, who had retired, retired and left the air before I joined the clinic. But he'd been there for a long, 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 long time. And I had patients, even when I'd been at the clinic for seven years, and he hadn't been there for, I think, ten maybe, still coming, oh, did you know Dr. Broom? Because he was so good and so well thought of that all the patients remembered him with such fondness and, and such... Um, that he'd done such an amazing job for them, such he was such a wonderful man, um, that they still remembered that. So that is the power of having a really strong image and identity and which creates your reputation, which will last and last and last and last and last, which is why, on the flip side, it is so important to manage that reputation because you don't want it ruined. And that's part of why, apart from, of course, the most important thing being the um re, you know reducing the risk of transmission that's the number one goal of everything at the moment I'm doing in clinic is is showing people what you've done to show them that you understand how important it is that they are safe and that will come through when people come into treatment into clinic you know we've had patients being quite impressed by what we've done and it may feel like overkill but actually that doesn't matter at the moment because I want patients who are neat, who are in, treat, in pain, who need treatment to feel safe to come in. And that is part of also that, in a way, an extension of your brand and brand image, the amount of effort you're happy to put in to make people safe in these times. And obviously we have a legal and a moral obligation to do that, but also a lot of us chiropractors I've, or therapists, I've heard a lot of people say that they're not particularly worried about catching it for themselves, but they're terrified of passing it to someone else. And maybe a lot of people are feeling like that, whether you're a therapist or not. And that's part of all the things that we put in place, you know, over and above perhaps what we need to do is because we want to make sure that no one could possibly get a chance or reduce the risk as much as we can of a transmission. Um, anyway, I digress. That may be slightly off brand image, but it's important to say that that's partly why I created the marketing checklist. Then I'll put a link to that in the show notes is so that you can show your patients how much effort you have put in to make it safe for them to return to clinic. So I know some of you may be returning in a couple of weeks after sort of the 4th of July date. Um, so you, know, you may have seen others before you already putting out their videos of how to get into clinic or showing their guidelines and publishing on their website of what of, of the changes we've made. It's just so important to get it right. A, for the stopping of tr any risk of transmission, B, to make people feel safe so that they are in pain, they want to return. And also to show how much, you, how, how responsible and how much you care and how important it is. Um, right, so off coronavirus now. So in recap, um, brand image um, helps create the, is the identity you want for your clinic, what you want people to say for you when you're not in the room. Um and how people will think about you and how you want your clinic. So if it's going to do that, close your eyes exercise, think about what the clinic would be like if you had a clinic of your dreams, how it would be, what people would say about it and how it would look and feel. That's all image. You create that with your brand identity. So your logo, your fonts, um, how you interact with people, your tone, and you help people identify that by using it consistently for everything that you do. Um, and if you're not sure about that, look at the big boys, look at Coke and Nike and people like that. That little tick logo for Nike, everyone knows, they see it everywhere. And you watch how much they use it so they, the people know. Um, and then know, like and trust. 
So that is where you're building a relationship with a patient before they've even got in contact with you through your website, through your blogging, through your social media, um, through your just general presence, um, either online or kind of virtually in the community with the um, results that you've created from people you've treated and how they speak about you. And that consistency through what you do online and the um, is your know, like and trust and your brand image. And it is really super important. So as I said, I have a checklist. Um, the link is in the in the show notes. And it's all the things you need to help create a good and think about to help create a brand identity in your brand image. So it's free to download, to so download that and then go through it. And actually be able to help you. Um, if you've got any questions, if you're not even already a member of my Facebook group, then do pop in and enjoy and join that. And it's the best way to get access to me. So if you want to ask a question, then pop it in there. And also you'll be the first to see any new stuff that I do generally goes into the group first. Perfect. Right, well, I hope that that's helped and that you're now buzzing with excitement about your brand image and identity. Um, I hope you have a great day. My name is Rosie Piercy. Goodbye.